Hello and welcome to episode 18 of the Player 3 Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Croft. Alongside me, we have the always visually stunning Larry Hunt. Hi. And here on my other side, he can fix you a nice, delicious glass of Pepsi and steal your daughter's heart, ladies and gentlemen, Doug Martin. Da -na -na -na. I like that it. is going to be stuck in my head <laughs> for the rest That's of the podcast. That's, That's all it takes. takes. All right, and then sitting next to him, we have Benjamin D. Hankins. This week, the D stands for Dark Souls because he has been gracious enough to let me borrow his 360 so that I can play Dark Souls. More on that later in the episode. Yeah, because I'm great. I'm I, pre awesome. I appreciate you. You're welcome. You're, you're appreciated. I know. How are we doing, guys? Pretty good. We're doing good. The Grammys were last night. Yep, yep. I went another year without winning one. I went another year without watching one. I was going to say the same thing. Uh, apparently, it was like really, really flat last night. It, uh, not a lot of people were loving it. Kanye West tried to Kanye West back again. That was pretty cool. And it was it was Beyonce again too, which is crazy. Well, I don't think that's too crazy. I think he is secretly in love with Beyonce. Maybe not so se not so secretly in love with Beyonce. But to say that Beck isn't really an artist, when like you said before we started, he writes his own music. And he has been relevant for the last 20 to 25 years in the music industry. Sh just showed how much that Kanye West was uh, out of touch with the rest of music as a whole. The best yeah. part of his quote was, my job is to inspire people who have to work regular jobs. <laughs> All right. <laughs> my, my favorite thing about Kanye is uh, how much he bashed T-Pain for using autotune. But last night he was rocking some autotune. Yeah. The thing is, is like T-Pain kind of set the course for autotune and then got joked by his own industry. Who was it that did, was it Rolling Stones that did an article about that? Did an interview with him talking about it? It was really, really interesting. Anyway, this has nothing to do with video games. Let's so, talk about games then. Let's talk about games. We are Player 3 Podcast. We get together um, every Monday, talk about video games, and we push this out on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, all the different uh, podcast services. It we put it all up also as a YouTube video, and we live stream it every Monday at 4 o'clock. That's going to be kind of our, our set time. So hmm. uh, so join us every Monday and watch us live, chat along with us. So go follow us, twitch.tv slash player3podcast, and that would be fantastic. But we're going to go ahead and get this week started. Oh, yesterday. What? Was the always visually stunning Larry Hunt's birthday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And as a birthday present to him, we're going to nix the uh, the jingles for this week only. So this will be a jingle-less Player 3 podcast. We're still going to have jingles. They're just going to be very monotoned and not melodic at all. Yeah, they're going to be exactly how Larry has wanted them to be since the dawn of time. Great. So we're going to do what we – how we're going to start this week off like we start off every week with the releases of the week. Releases, releases of the of week. week. Clap, clap, clap. clap. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Happy releasing. Birthday, Larry. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Releasing on consoles this week, uh, and we really, and we just covered the uh, current gen consoles on this. By the way, a new article from Dizzy Cooper has gone up. His Far Cry Four review, and then another article of his is going up later this evening or tomorrow morning, uh, talking about why he has yet to join the current gen uh, console generation. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But anyway, uh, releasing on PS4 and Xbox One this week. Here we go. Uh, releasing for both, we have uh, from Turtle Rock Studios, the four versus one online multiplayer game, Evolve. We've talked a lot about Evolve, but let's talk about who's picking Evolve up. It seems like the room's kind of split at the moment. Yeah, because Ben, you're real into this. Talk about that for a minute. I think Because I need time uh... to post this link. I think this. Well, I could have posted it. No, I got it. Okay. I uh, I think that this game would be very good if I had the support of you people um, to play with me because I, I don't really want to play as the monster. Monsters scare me. I like to kill them, and I had a lot of fun with the demo. Unlike Lucas here, I just it wasn't that I didn't have fun. It was just. I played it and thought, this is as much fun as I'm going to get out of it. Like, yeah. this is as good as it gets. <laughs> we have enough games that we like to play together. I don't need yeah, another true, game on this list. Like, I still really want us to play the Halo 3 campaign, which means Larry and I have to finish the Halo 2 campaign. Tonight. I would love to finish it. Tonight. 
Okay. Tonight. Right, let's you, do it. You, you, uh, all right. So tonight. Uh, so follow us here on Player Three Podcast, <laughs> and uh, we will we will finish up that stream tonight. Tonight. Um, but we. <laughs> We, we we have so many games that we like to play together, and the only way that that game can be fun is if you are in a party with people who are either chatting or that you know. And right. that's just I don't I don't want the enjoyment of my experience to hinge fully upon other people, because uh, like even with the games that are multiplayer that I enjoy playing, um, I can play them and have just as much fun by myself. And Evolve just wasn't that that game tonight. <laughs> 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 I don't. I don't know what's happening. Is there like ESC? Is there ESC on Master Chief yet? Not yet. When is it coming out? Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I set him up. <laughs> We're gonna have to start this podcast like we start off every podcast. Over. Over. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so I have no idea when ODST's coming. Because that gosh, that I'm waiting on that. That's gonna be awesome. I, will, I I can't wait for them to get that freaking game to work. That's what I'm. I'm talking Halo Master Chief plays, and that's all I want. But yeah. what are you? What are your feelings about Evolve? So you've got to fight the monster, but there's also stuff in the jungle running around. How much does that impact you? Unless your teammates are idiots and attack those things, it doesn't matter. They won't attack you. Is there any benefit to attack them? No. You can get power ups. There's some of them that have like buffers that you can get from attacking them, but. I thought some things would jump out at you from the. Aren't no. there carnivorous animals and plants? No, there are things. Yeah, stuff will attack you. Oh, even if well, you don't yeah, there's something it. like that one thing in the swamp comes comes out and kills. You. But you, I mean, there's very apparent situations that you get in where the things will attack you. We just had a lot of idiots on our team that attacked everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it really ruins the experience, and that's why I keep saying like, it is a game that hinges on the people that you are with. So, cool, right? You're kind of, you've been up in the air about this. You have some people pressuring you to buy it. I have some people pressuring me. Um, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna watch some streams. I'm gonna. I might borrow the game from a friend um, after he gets his initial fix from it, and uh, we'll see how it goes. It's oh. not. It's not top of the list for me right now, though. Uh, Apparently. yeah. It's gonna take a lot of convincing to get me to to get it because there's a lot coming out. We got the order coming out. We've got Bloodborne coming out, and so like there's. My priorities right now are Dying Light and then Evolve. See, I, I also kind of want to play Dying Light. And I, 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 if I was to buy one or the other, it would be Dying Light over Evolve. I read something today where they're working on some uh, player mods. You know what else is very reminiscent of uh, Le Left 4 Dead? Dying Light. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it would have more of a Dead Island. No, feel. it's more of a Dead it's, Island. It's feel. way more it's, Dead Island. but It's it's, it's reminiscent <laughs> of Left 4 Dead in the sense of It's still zombies. reminiscent of the fact that you can play everything together. But it's open world, which makes no, there's no correlation to Left 4 Dead. Yeah, you just described Dead Island. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very it's, reminiscent of Dead Island. It's, it's also very reminiscent of uh, Madden 25 in the sense of you can play it on consoles. It's very reminiscent of uh, George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. In the sense that there are things eating flesh. In the sense that it is produced totally in color. What's going to be so awesome... <laughs> what's going to be so awesome is if you end up getting it and we can play it together. And I'm going to be such a higher level than you. But the zombies at my level are going to be the same zombies that I would be fighting normally. And then the zombies at your level aren't going to be crazy high zombies. They're going to be low level zombies. That's probably one of the coolest features of, of that game. That like... You're not bound to his experience, but uh, like at it, it, his level. So you guys have verified that that's how it works. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> you really believe that Ben has verified that? I verified uh, it by listening to Luke say that that's the way it's supposed to be. I say I'm saying that because you said that's the way it oh, is. So. Yeah, I verified it. <laughs> Journalism three podcast. <laughs> Okay, um, so that's coming out on both consoles. That's your big release for this week. And now let me go through. Here's the, and that's all that's coming out on both. Uh, so let me go through here and tell you what's coming out on PS4. The PS4 blog gives like this awesome drop post every week that tells you what's coming out, digital, retail, all that stuff. It's very, very cool. And then, uh, but for Xbox, you just got to kind of piece stuff together. Uh, I haven't found anything, at least. If you, if if the viewers have something that will help me with what's releasing on Xbox <laughs> One, other than just like the IGN list and the subreddit and all that, send that my way. Something more comprehensive, it'd be great. Player3podcast at gmail.com. 
Thank you. Um, all right, so here we go. Releasing on PS4 this week. Uh, obviously, we have Evolve, and then let's keep going. Uh, minutes. This is it says journey through a twisted form of bullet hell, a unique slice of abstract action and gameplay purity. Collect, dodge, expand, and squeeze your way across sixty intense levels. Can you retrieve? Uh, can you retrieve the tricky perfect on the world? <laughs> 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 then uh, we have. Super Stardust Ultra, which is being produced by House Marquee, which is also the people who did Resogun. Very uh, well, for any Resogun so cool. fans out there, the fate of the galaxy is in your hands. Blast enemy ships and deadly asteroids into oblivion in this rapid fire space shoot 'em up. So uh, that looks like uh, it's a lot of fun. And then we have Unmechanical Extended Edition, which also released on Xbox One a couple weeks ago. So those are your releases for the PS4 this week. And then releasing on the Xbox One, we have The Escapist from Team 17 Software. The Escapist is a time management prison escape game that gives you the freedom to live the life of a prison inmate, ultimately plotting and pulling off a daring escape. So, yes. Freedom to live the life of a prison inmate? Freedom is in quotes, if that helps you. Oh, okay. Okay, the uh, freedom to live. But that is ironic. I love it. How much freedom do you, like, can I really okay, just be I, free to live the life out and not escape? I, like, I, literally, I literally know this paragraph. I've been okay. Let me set the stage for you. Set your coffee. <laughs> you set your How coffee awesome on it? the shower floor. How awesome <laughs> would it be if you could be a just a lifetime criminal in this, uh, in this jail system? You're just trapped in jail, though. How would that be awesome? Because you could just ship people all day long. <laughs> no, no, no. Here's, here's the thing. I've, I've, ha I've had a lot of thought about going to prison because mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm going to be wrongfully accused of something one day. And I'm going to end up there. <laughs> you're right tonight. Or, <laughs> you're going to die in a random act of violence. I'm, uh, this, it, uh, this tonight thing is going to be the, that thing I go back and listen to the podcast tomorrow and I'm like, literally everyone has shot themselves at this point in the podcast. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Last one, <Seth. laughs> no, no, no. Okay, um, but yeah, it, I I had um, a youth minister growing up who was like, if I ever get put in jail, the very first thing I'm doing is I'm going up to the, a guard and I'm punching him square in the face so that I go straight to solitary confinement. There's no, there's not a chance in this world I'm surviving prison. I wear skinny jeans. <laughs> you drink copious amounts of coffee. I know, and it's just, it's like frou frou for fancy coffee. I I know how to operate a French press. I can't survive in prison. That's like the number one. You can survive. You just wouldn't have very happy survivalness. Do you get coffee in prison? I don't know. You get it if from it, the it's commissary. Probably, I don't think they would feed you any warm. It's instant beverages. coffee from the commissary. You could you could. You, uh, hot ben, coffee's a weapon. Did you know that? Wild speculation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's instant coffee from the commissary. Did you know that Alcatraz was the first prison to have hot showers? Because it made the inmates not able to be used to cold water, so it would, was harder for them to escape if they oh. tried to swim off the island. So they could only bathe in hot water? Like, right. they couldn't choose to... Right. It was all Informational warm. three podcasts. We better move so on it was warm. We it wasn't, like, yeah. hot. Like, like scorching beans. hot. Oh, yeah. They scalded their food. <laughs> <laughs> um... And then this is this isn't really a game, but uh, Sling TV has uh, launched today, and they also announced that they have re uh, reached a partnership agreement with AMC. So you'll get ESPN, HGTV, Food Network, uh, a bunch of different channels, and then AMC, which is interesting because AMC is normally terrible to work with when it comes to on-demand agreements and this sort of stuff, the streaming stuff. They'll probably just give it to them for the first year, and then the second year they'll run. Sling TV is about to take AMC off, and you won't be able to watch Walking Dead anymore. Call them and complain now. And then Sling TV is going to have to come out and, and be like, we don't know what AMC is talking about. And it, it was just the weirdest battle of commercials that have, has ever taken place on television. Yep. Gosh, The Walking Dead was so good last night. No spoilers, though. We won't talk about it anymore than that. So, um, but yeah, Sling TV, 20 bucks, you get all these channels. Um if people start saying that this is a, a good service, a good reliable service, I my direct TV is up in April, and I highly considering dropping it between this and PlayStation View. If they announce that PlayStation View is like fifty bucks a month or something like that, and I can piece this all together for seventy, I'll do it in a heartbeat because it's got all the channels I need to watch basketball when the playoffs roll around, and I just get a little antenna for my house. It'd be great. So. This is the future, guys. This is these are the kind of programs that are gonna put Comcast out of its misery. 
out of our misery. This coupled with net neutrality, gosh, I can't wait to watch that come. When are we getting? When are we getting fiber? Google Fiber. Probably never. Probably when we're like 30. next week. Can we pay for a distributor to come out here and like wire everything? What are you talking about? I just want to pay somebody for Google Google Fiber. All right, moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, your releases for this week. Releases of the week. Clap clap. It's beautiful. It's Happy a birthday, beautiful Larry. Thing. Thanks. <laughs> Happy birthday, Larry. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Larry. to you. Tonight. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Larry. Happy birthday to you. You like that? Moving on. Woo. Last night. <sighs> Hello and welcome to the Player 3 Podcast where we're going to sacrifice <laughs> Seth. All right. New, moving on to news. News with the podcast, guys. Yeah. Happy birthday, Larry. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, IGN first for this month is Bloodborne. They have released a slew of videos, uh, one of them being a first 15 of the first 15 minutes of Bloodborne. We, us three, have had an opportunity to watch that. This is a game I am extremely excited about. Larry, I would recommend avoiding watching it. Because uh, you because will want it. you don't own a PlayStation. Okay. What's Bloodborne? I don't know. I'm going to step out of the room. Do you not know what Bloodborne is for real? If no, it makes you feel any better, I'm not like crazy about it. I mean, it looks fun. But... Okay, well, let's start over here with Pessimism 3 Podcast, and then we'll move on to the people who um, enjoy video games. I mean, it, it looks fun, but I just feel like I would get bored with it after a moment or two. Pessimism 3 Podcast. <laughs> I, would bored with, I, was bored with it, I was bored with it after the 18 minutes of the game. I feel like with Ben... What we experience a lot of the time is, I'm really excited about this game, and I can't wait for it to come out, and then you trade it in mm -hmm. a week later. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you got Bloodborne, you would be like, you know, right now, it's, I I'm really bored with it, I haven't even played it yet, you know, I can go without it. You're going to get it because we get it, and then you're going to love it more than any of us, and keep it much long, much further after we trade it in down the line. I like it. Do you think that's all that happened? It's a theory, I'm working it out in my head. It's like, not. it's like the Eno theory. Ben will be the first in line at the midnight release of this thing, busting the door down like, I can't wait for Bloodborne! It's gonna be so I'll good. have my, like, he'll show I'll up have in his my little makeshift, cape. Like, my, yeah. my makeshift He's gonna side. have his shoulder pads on. He's gonna be in a Destiny costume for some reason. <laughs> with a Nerf gun and a shaving razor. Like I'll, a have like the, uh, <laughs> I'll have, like, the makeshift, makeshift scythe and stuff. It's gonna be... It's gonna be awesome. I... Right. I personally... Uh, loved the first 15 minutes of this game. The the opening cutscene, the wacky character that's talking there at the beginning just kind of draws you in. He's incredibly creepy. The atmosphere I love. I love the Victorian city, the kind of gothic looking setting. Um, the combat, the thing I'm worried about uh, starting Dark Souls, uh, which I'll be streaming throughout this week, um, the combat in the Dark Souls is is really, um, really defense oriented, and you gotta like kind of kind of wait and then just take your uh, your offense when it comes. Where this game with Bloodborne, it's designed to be more fast paced. You know, you have a gun rather than a shield, and the gun isn't it's, really used for damage. Your defense for, is your offense. Yeah, and and the game is designed for you to play more offensively, more offensively. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I feel like because of that, it's gonna, it's gonna hold me a little longer. Uh, I hope Dark Souls can capture me with something else rather than maybe the play style, just cause hanging behind a shield for a while doesn't seem like my cup of tea, but they've said with Bloodborne that like, if you try the strategy where you're just waiting behind a shield, you're going to get overwhelmed by enemies. Cause it's not like they just stop coming, but the game looks really pretty too. Um, so it it just got me more excited about it. Even that early build looked beautiful. Yeah, that was the thing. Is like the that first fifteen minutes was on an older build, and so uh, some of the movement looked a little funky. Some of the lighting looked a little weird. But once they put those finishing touches on it, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be really good. So March can't get here fast enough. Well, I'm I'm excited about the order, and I think the order will hold me long enough to to get to it. All these games with like. Uh, that are kind of period pieces, but also, uh, well, taking place somewhere in the past, but. Fantastical period pieces. Yeah, have somehow injected, like, these crazy monsters for some reason. That's that's really gotten my attention. So, uh, like Abe Lincoln Vampire Hunter. 
I had that on my DVR for about six months and never touched it once. <laughs> well, I recommend the book, not the movie, so much. I really enjoy watching you guys play it. What is a book? I don't know. Um, oh, you mean a Kindle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, sweet. So, uh, so Bloodborne. Uh, they also showed how you can customize your characters and, and that sort of stuff. And then there's a third video on here. I'm gonna click this real quick because I don't remember what this video is. Hold on. Oh, now you'll click it. Yeah, I'm gonna click it and see see what it is. Click what do you think it. it is, Ben? What do you think this is a video of? Um, uh, uh small cats. No, okay, this is just about how it has shields, <laughs> but that you don't want to use the shields like you would in any other, like, Dark Souls It game. does have shields? It does have shields, but you don't really hide behind them because... So are the... I like uh, the riot shields in Call of Duty. Are the... Um, Whatever, the riot shields you could just sit behind for years and years. If you had blast shield on, then no one could touch you. It was awesome. Are the weapons different? Like, you, can you get different weapons than what was what yeah. played in the thing? Yeah, there's all kinds of different... It's like an RPG. Those are just, like, the iconic... Yeah. Cover story weapons. Oh, there's yeah. different weapons? Yes. It's a video game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All that's, right. kinda, that's why I was so bored with it, because I thought it was just the same weapons over and over All again. All they give you is a giant straight razor and a shotgun. Yeah, and, and you're a just... Nerf gun. No, when you we, gotta, when you they started the off thing. in the video, he had, like, he got a blunderbuss, which is, like, the big shotgun thing, mm -hmm. or you had, like, a pistol. Oh. And then you get the giant straight razor, and I think there were some other things in there. Oh. But, um, yeah, he got options. Oh. Yeah. Ben, you said you watched the first few minutes of it. I did, but I don't. Re I didn't remember the choices that you can. You can. That's what you get for get. watching it while you're working, while you're supposed to be doing your job. I watched it this morning. Oh, I thought you did it while you were <laughs> at work. All right. Um. So that was Bloodborne. Uh, Dark Souls Two is coming in April to PS4 and I think Xbox One as well. Uh, but on the PS4, it will be running at 60 frames per second at 1080p. Um. Like I said, trying Dark Souls for the... Has anyone here played Dark Souls? No, but I, I'm really fascinated by it because I like games that are really hard. I don't. I do. Uh, but I'm hoping to. I didn't. That's a better way to say it. I didn't like games that were very hard, but now... Maybe you've evolved. I'm playing through The Last of Us on Grounded. Uh, Difficulty. My God. Oh. Hold on. Uh, here you go. Crazy Yak. Uh, I'm not sure how good a source he is. Says there is also potentially a Gatling gun in uh, Bloodborne. That would be mighty fine. It would be mighty fine. But the, I don't know if that if it's going to happen because the guns aren't designed to do damage. They're designed well, for crowd control. It could be control. a weak Gatling gun. Just kind of a, yeah. I guess, like a more effective crowd control weapon. How would you have a single-handed Gatling gun? Well, I mean... Kind of the same way. Isn't that a, like in uh, Advanced Warfare? Don't you have like the two Gatling guns that you would run around with on your yeah, hands? Yeah, but you're in a mech. It's also, you know, a video <laughs> game. So That's true. It's, got, they're, they're it's also, got that going for the, it. The first thing you fight in the game was a giant werewolf, right? <laughs> yeah. Really, the Gatling yeah. gun is the only thing that's not... Uh, <laughs> Completely realistic in this it's, game. It's, it, Bloodborne's not really bound in reality, so considering you're like one of the last humans. Oh, on there's there. an NPC that carries one. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. Thank you, Crazy. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hit that follow button. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Dark Souls 2. What I'm hoping happens for me is that I like Dark Souls 1. Uh, uh, if I do, I'm going to try Demon Souls. And then maybe I'll want to spend $60 rather than $19 on Dark Souls 2 for, uh, for PS4. So, but yeah, 60 frames per second, 1080p. All right, moving on to Destiny. We haven't had much Destiny talk in the last few weeks. So, That's probably um, for the best. But here we go. Larry, you traded this game in. I'm ready. All right, here we go. Uh, GameSpot has an article on their website about a leak about the House of Wolves expansion that is apparently going to be coming on May 19th. Uh, and this has been addressed that the stuff in this may not be uh, completely accurate. But the fact I do want to jump in there and ask a question. I want yes. to interrupt you. Yes. On that point. Uh, last time they had the, the whole leak situation. That's what they said. Was it accurate that by the time the expansion came out, it actually was vastly different from what everyone expected? That they're, they're talk, They weren't... Hold on, I'm trying to remember what you're talking about. Uh, people looked onto the disc, they saw the weapons yeah. coming up, the areas that were going to be available, mm -hmm. and the three... F Bungie. Bungie responded by saying, well, things are going to be a lot different by the time the expansion actually comes out. No, that okay. was not true. So they're probably lying again. Well, uh, well, <laughs> well, the fact that Bungie felt the need to send their community manager out to comment on this means that there is something in here that needed to be commented on. As yeah. far as the validity of it. So, um, however, with this expansion, this is 
none of this is contained on the disc. This is all, you know, stuff you will have to download. You don't just purchase it and then ten seconds later get access to the stuff in it. Oh, not even ten seconds. So, so there's a, there is a potential that uh, this does kind of deliver more on what we were expecting. But basically. Um, the House of Wolves mission description reads, quote, The Queen's Fallen have purchased their freedom with Awoken blood. Hunt down the traitors and your debt to the Queen will be paid. So this is an Awoken storyline uh, that's going to take place on the moon. It's gonna, uh, and so the expansion is going to include the Awoken storyline, an exclusive raid, three new Crucible maps, and a new Fallen Strike. And then, you know, hundreds of new weapons, armor, this uh, is and second. gear. This is the second expansion that you bought if you that you get if you got the season pass. Okay. Season pass. We need to do the first raid still tonight. Not tonight. I'm gonna kick you off this podcast. <laughs> I hope a grizzly bear tears through that window and just drags your body out. Gosh, you enjoyed me it too. I love you, Seth, but that would be an amazing sight to see. <laughs> tonight. Okay. Um... <laughs> So they came out and Deej, the community manager, uh, just said, you know, take this stuff with a grain of salt, which means it's probably all true. But there is there is a ton of armor that's going to come out. Let's see. I'm going to try to read some of these uh, descriptions you here. You want to play some Destiny tonight, buddy? Maybe. Mayhaps. Possibly. Um, force your way aboard a House of Wolves catch and destroy the powerful walker aboard. The problem is, is all these missions are just going to kind of follow the same vein of just like fight your way through enemies. Oh, here's a uh, one that gives you a lot. Test yourself. Test your <laughs> that's might. It. That's all you got. Um, that's it. <laughs> let's see. What else do we have here? Launches a random strike at level 28. So these are these are just different mission descriptions. But I, it, like, there's they're not going to deviate from what they've been doing. All, uh, so far, of just like fight your way through enemies, fight a boss, get pushed back out into orbit. Like the the crucible maps are uh, are interesting, but I don't know if they're going to do anything with this story. That's like gonna, the new equipment, redeem it. huh? I like the new equipment. Well, then you can go on there because I'm not reading all that equipment out. There's and a, I would really love to do the raid. We we are many raids behind. Many raids behind. Many, many raids. One day. Behind. If anybody that's watching would, would like to do the raid with us, we're all level 30. No, we're not. Yep, that's a lie. We're I all am close. the only one that is level 30. <laughs> we're, all, <laughs> we're all close to level 30. <laughs> okay, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. All right, uh, here are your top selling games on the PlayStation Store for January. And remember, this is just digitally. So um, it's coming up because Google Docs. All right, here we go. Number one on PS4, Resident Evil. Uh, have you had a chance to pick this up and play it no i was going to i haven't played it yet um i've i've done a lot of watching on twitch and i really like it a lot they did a lot of improvements to it um i never actually finished it as a child because i was terrified but uh, i actually watched one of the playthroughs and accidentally saw the end of the jill playthrough but um it looks well, i'm not gonna talk about it i'm just i don't know there's no... Shh. hasn't that game been out for like years it, yeah. it has, but on, yeah. you know, there's people are still sensitive. That's true. Very I, gu true. I guess with it being a re-release, I, I guess it's kind of like how people are mad when you spoiled the, spoiled the end to the uh, Great Gatsby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, uh, you should have read that as a child. I feel like that was recommended reading <laughs> at some point. Well, you know. Oh my gosh, man! I logged on. I got on Facebook. Luckily, uh, I got on Facebook after we had got done watching uh, The Walking Dead, and the very first thing was a spoiler. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Last night after you guys left, Jessica was like, I, she had some idea of, of what had happened because of how excited we got. And I, I was careful to not reveal anything to her, but then freaking Chris Hardwick advertising his Talking Dead show, just throwing spoilers <laughs> right out there in a commercial break. I'm going to find you, Chris Hardwick. <laughs> I will find you, nerds. Make it, make it so, Phil Spencer. <laughs> make it so. Um, so Resident Evil was number one. Number two was Dying Light. Dying Light is actually sold extremely, extremely well. I think It's a good game. I think they mentioned that uh, 1.2 million players have gone on and played Dying Light. It so. just shows what happens when you put out a game that's good. Well, it seems like they're doing a lot for the players, like that you know, mod stuff we were talking about earlier. They're going to allow people yeah, to do kind of like Minecraft things. Yeah, like, they're like, um, aren't they releasing packages to allow people to do it more easily? Right. Like you can, I think I read one where like people can drop kick a zombie and shoot him up into the stars. 
and things like that. They're going to like add more weapon combos that you can make. Things Does like when that. you wish upon a star play what, after <laughs> I kick the... You, you might like, be able to make it happen. They give you the technology. Yeah, so that would be That awesome. would be amazing. I knew I'd buy it. If you were a modder and you were watching this stream, make it so, Phil make Spencer. Make it so, Phil Spencer. It's sort of like, like Skyrim has all these crazy mods. I hope that's what happens with Dying Light. Like, if, have you ever seen the mod that turns all the dragons in Skyrim into Thomas the Tank Engine? No. <laughs> Is that the, the real? <laughs> yes. I love when companies embrace the fact that players want to get in and do crazy stuff to their games. Like, that's the whole reason DayZ exists, because it's an Arma 2, uh, 2 mod that, like, somebody just had an idea, went in, used the shell of that game, and made their, their whole other game, and, like, Arma embraced it. So, I love it. Love it. Um, let's see what else. Grand Theft Auto Five was number three. Uh, Battlefield Four was number four, which is very interesting to me. Um, Minecraft they had a big sale on in January. Oh, okay, all right, that, like the premium edition. And then I'm just going to quickly go through uh, the rest of them. Minecraft, uh, PlayStation Four edition, Shadow Warrior, Grim Fandango remastered, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Final Fantasy fourteen. Fourteen is that right? right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the, that's the, it. The, the, the like MMO. Yeah, a Realm Reborn, uh, Costume Quest Two, Rezo Gun, uh, Far Cry Four was number twelve. Game of Thrones Episode One, Iron from Ice, uh, The Unfinished Swan, Madden NFL Fifteen, FIFA Fifteen, Metal Gear Solid Five, Ground Zeroes, Guacamelee, Dragon Age Inquisition, and then Destiny at number twenty. Um, that's just an interesting thing to look at. It really doesn't tell you anything about what's popular because it's only digital. And I would venture to guess that still most people are buying their games retail. So, would you agree with that? I yeah, I think so. I think that's going to shift here in the next two, uh, you know, eighteen months, two years, probably. To nine. There are there are four there are four uh, WWE game add-on things on the top add-ons. Yeah, Les has been buying a lot of WWE <laughs> 2K15 stuff. Um, so that was uh, that's good. Um, Here's a little interesting news. Rise of the Tomb Raider, as we know, is going to be an Xbox One, at least timed exclusive, if not full exclusive. I don't think it's going to be full exclusive. But they have passed along uh, the 360 version to the Nixus Studios to uh, develop, to get that out of the Square Enix realm to, uh, to develop. Um, this is the route that, I guess this is the stepping stone to just the complete letting go of a console generation to say we're not going to develop we're not going to set our a team on this we're going to outsource this work to to port it um to uh, to the other console generation and i mean how long uh, we're what 14 months into this console generation like give or take yeah yeah so at what is that all yeah because they, they released it in okay. november of 2013 so no, yeah, yeah. Right. PS4 was September, wasn't it? No, November. Earlier, earlier than November than Xbox. Oh. So, at what point do, do 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 they just say like, okay, no more? Let it go. Yeah, just let, let it go. Let it go. Man, it's his birthday podcast. We're trying not to sing on it, and he just bust out and look. I do what go. I want. It's your birthday. Well, it's the day after your birthday. Happy birthday, Larry. Thanks. Um, at what point though do you, do you let go? What was PS2 like? PS2 lasted a while. I feel like I, I feel like getting, Madden continued to get released. So. See, I remember getting NCAA like '09 on the Xbox, the original Xbox. I think you let it go when you get to the point where you realize that those older consoles can't hold you back anymore. <laughs> shut up! <laughs> and at that point, you just walk away and shut the door. That's when you say, "Baby, I gotta go." The graphic quality never bothered you. I'm moving you anyway. forward. All right, I'm dealing with Frozen and tonight. <laughs> tonight. Okay, hey, I'm just over here sad. I don't care I what do you're going to say. Yeah, ben, ben is Ben is the only one contributing to the conversation. We we should reevaluate our lives. <laughs> all right, in all seriousness, yeah, a year out. Okay, it's time to let the old consoles goodbye. We enjoyed you. The, Rest in peace. Don't. I, I wouldn't say drop support. Oh, yeah. But, Don't even look at them anymore. <laughs> they can't even connect to Xbox Live. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I would say I would say they've had their run. Well, Dizzy and I were uh, having a conversation about this over the last week. And 
a lot of these games are coming out on last gen consoles uh, after they come out on current gen. Like that was kind of that it, with. Uh, there was a game that did that. Shadow of Mordor. Shadow of Mordor. And Shadow of Mordor really, like, I, th I think the 360 and PS3 versions of that game could piggyback off of the good press of the other game, of the Xbox mm -hmm. One and PS4 games. But yet, it was a totally different experience. Like, like Diz is playing on PS3 right now. And he said, like... He's really underwhelmed, isn't he? Yeah. It's like, you hear all these great things about these games, and so you're like, I'll go pick them up on PS3. And expecting, like, there's going to be some sort of downgrade within it, but then you're completely underwhelmed by, by what's given to you. And it's unfair to the consumer to just kind of charge 60 bucks for some back burner project that your studio is doing. But as long as you're making money off of it, I guess they're going to continue to do it. And on the other end of the spectrum, like, the, the updated console, their game has to be held back a little bit in order to make it, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm, I'm proud of the fact that uh, the developers of Rise of the Tomb Raider have said, like, you know what, we're get, we're gonna outsource this work so that we don't have to worry about it. But is the casual consumer gonna understand like this isn't the same experience as I'm gonna get on Xbox One? It may not even be close. Obviously, the story and all that stuff is gonna all be the same, but the experience is going to be different. But Bravo to, to Square Enix to say, like, we're going to put all of our resources onto the Xbox One and let people move uh, and let this, this company take care of Xbox 360. But, I mean, it, as long as it's making money, it's going to continue to happen. Uh, you know, bravo to Dying Light for saying, like, mm -hmm. in order to stay true to what we wanted to do, we're going to just release this on current-gen consoles, and we understand that there's, like, I don't know, a 100 million people install base on <laughs> on these old consoles. We're limited in our sale potential, but you sell 1.2 million copies, and there you go. There's your there's your reward. And bravo to them for releasing a game that functioned. Yeah, out of the Amen. box. Amen. I haven't heard any complaints about it. Was it was great. I haven't had it, the first thing happen that's been ridiculous. So. And even Dead Island, when it first launched, it had a lot of issues. So I was a little worried, but I'm good job. The only issues I've heard out of it are some of the achievements not yeah, popping. which I don't. I mean, I'm not far enough in the game now to where it matters for me. But I know that matters a lot to some people, like to yeah. get in and to and to see. Um, Shuhei Yoshida um, was at the Dice Awards, and he made some interesting comments about annualized games, and it would be cool for us to have a little conversation about these. Basically, he came out and said that he does not like the annualized franchise model where games are being pushed out uh, yearly and just uh, this is on uh, VG 24 seven. It says, uh, and this is an article by Sheriff Sayed. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, I don't know. Um, it says, according to Yoshida sequels, didn't always have the reputation they have now as solid earners. They were even seen as wasted expenses that often do not generate a return on the same level of the original games. Later on, however, things changed when sequels became less risky and marketing teams realized they could annualize game releases. This became an issue as games got more complex and took longer to make. And Yoshida basically just said that like, you can't deliver the quality that you need that, that you need to deliver to gamers if you're releasing things annually. And some of our biggest franchises have become annualized releases. We have uh, we have Assassin's Creed, we have Call of Duty, uh, Battlefield has become an annualized release. Like all of these games are taking on this model. Do you agree with Yoshida? Do you not agree with Yoshida? I think we would. I think we all agree with Yoshida. But why? I agree with Yoshida. You just it, it's kind of. And we'll talk about this a little bit with with the Battlefield beta, but these games that release every year, like it's the same game every year. There's there's very little difference. It it just I don't know. They I, rarely I, I bring anything. It, I think it depends um, on on what you like. Um, I think Call of Duty a lot of the times does a pretty good job of it. Every once in a while they come out with a ghost that that just drops the ball all around. Um, but yeah, you. I think you lose a little bit in making games, like you know, one game every year. Assassin's Creed being one of those franchises, Call of Duty being one, because you're on those deadlines. Um, the good thing about the Halo games, things like that, even though they have some problems, you can tell that they put a lot of time, they put years into making these games. I think it's uh, it's an it's interesting to note that like 
the games that make the biggest splashes when it comes to sequels are the games that take their time coming out. Like, like Halo, you know, Halo, Halo two came out. What? Four years after Halo one. Was it four? It might, yeah, it might have been. It was three to four, I believe. Yeah. So, and then you have the Uncharted series that um, it. I think between Uncharted three and Uncharted four, there's going to be four years. I think between two and three, there was two years. And it, it, studios just taking their time. And with Call of Duty, I guess now they're on this three year cycle with uh, with Treyarch and Activision and. Right. No, Infinity Ward and Activision. Act- no, no, no. Well, no, Activision's, Activision's all of them. the publisher. Oh, Treyarch, um, Infinity Treyarch. Ward, yeah, Sledgehammer. Just, Sledgehammer, yeah. Um, and so I guess in that sense, they're not really annualized, but I felt like in all of those games, it's just you're taking little little steps up. Like, right. like it's just little changes. I think Call of Duty's on the right track now with this three year gap they have. It helped with the two years um, with just Infinity Ward and Treyarch. But yeah, they're. Uh, so I think uh, personally, I think that Advanced Warfare is probably one of the smoothest, and I think one of the best Call of Duties in general. Yeah, that game's really since awesome. since the first couple, you know, Modern Warfare One, Modern Warfare Two, uh, mm-hmm. World at War. Go just ahead. just for the sake of accuracy, there were three years between each each game in the original Halo se- oh, okay. trilogy. Okay, Ben, what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, I think I think for me. As a consumer, it's it's I get more excited about a game when it's not an annual release. Even you know, even not even to say anything about the quality. Like I just, you get more pumped up when you're like, I don't know when this game's gonna. Co- I really want to play the next game in the series. I don't know what's gonna come out again. And then when they announce it, it's that much more like hype about it. So it's not when you know another Call of Duty is gonna come out next year and you can skip this year's Call of Duty. It's kind of it's less like. It's less exciting, I guess. You know, you don't have to, you don't feel like you have to get that game. But if you take the the model of a year or two in between, or you know, two or three years in between your next release, you're gonna be able to hype that up a lot more. Like coming back, you know, like when Halo Two released, how like that was like one of the highest selling games in history. It was Halo. That's what made midnight releases, Mm -hmm. pretty much. But having that anticipation of this game is amazing and um, it's just I don't know it's just it it makes the hype train that much better when you can when you wait that long. Not that the hype train's a great thing, but I love being excited for a game even if it doesn't necessarily pay off when I first get it. But I love being excited for a game, and that's uh that's one thing that pays into it is having that wait time in between releases. I think where it really shines through the most, though, uh, is for people who care about the campaign. Like nobody cares about the Call of Duty campaign. <laughs> I don't know. They've they've had a few really great ones. Yeah, yeah. I, Especially I mean, like this last one was good. they uh, like the the price series in the Modern Warfare, like the the story. Oh, yeah. price. But what I'm saying though is the vast majority of consumers aren't purchasing Call of oh, Duty for the right. campaign. That's very true. Whereas there was a significant percentage of consumers purchasing Halo for the campaign. Multiplayer didn't mm-hmm. hurt, but... I was about to say, like, yeah. I don't know if the gap is that wide between them. I know a lot of people that used to buy Halo just for the multiplayer. That's the only reason I bought Halo that, me, in the first place. Me, that's the only reason I owned it. Because you never played any of them. Until yeah, that's the why I'm just now election. going through. I thought you were campaign. saying campaign, buddy. That's the only reason I bought the games for, was for the campaign. When I first bought... Uh, I bought a, I bought an Xbox 360 exclusively for the campaign <laughs> to Halo 3. That was the only reason I well, bought it. Well, I think it. that's, and it's a little different for us because we came, you know, we're, we're a little older than a lot of gamers around. Um, we didn't have online functionality yeah. back mm-hmm. in the day. I remember playing the first Halo on the original Xbox, and I think that we just caught the tail end of online capability on those systems. I think there's something to say about the rhythm of annualized releases. And it gives you specific times of the year to look forward to if you're fans of certain series. You know, if you're a Call of Duty fan, you know November's coming around uh, the corner. If you're an MLB The Show fan, you know March is, is coming. And, you know, all of those different fran- – so, like, there's something to say about the rhythm. But it's when companies take advantage of the rhythm and the excitement to say we're going to just release subpar games. Uh, 
I'm a firm believer that games like Madden would really benefit from being on a two-year release cycle. And I was talking to, to Diz about this, and if you'll give me just a moment to, to kind of hash this out and see what you guys think about it, especially someone like you, mm-hmm. Ben, who's really into uh, those games. A lot of people argue with, uh, with sports titles that year to year, sometimes you just feel like you're paying for a roster update and where – there hasn't been enough features added to really justify another $60 purchase. So you have a lot of people who already say, I'm going to wait two or three years because I get really deep into the franchise or the career modes on a game. Um, so what if instead of letting those people's uh, mindset go by the wayside, you kind of embrace that mindset and say, well, what we're going to do is we're going to go on a two year dev cycle. And uh, we just released Madden 15. Madden 15 is going to be the Madden uh, until Madden 17. And what we're going to do is for the first year, when you pay 60 bucks for the game, uh, you get the uh, the roster updates for completely free. So from the start of the season all the way to the last week of the Super Bowl, you get them for free. When 16 rolls around, you pay fourteen ninety nine. You get all the roster updates for that season as well. So you're not paying $60 for a quote-unquote roster update. You're paying $15 for what you – already know is just simply a roster update and they can toss in any changes in logos or uniforms like that and they can import the correct schedule since that doesn't get announced till later on but then you're on this two-year dev cycle where you have the opportunity to say we're just going to blow something up and completely rebuild it from the ground up because right now like ea has really gotten in this thing of we just got to kind of slowly integrate our changes and they've also gotten really bad about saying we're going to remove a feature and then three years later put it back in and you know market it as some brand new feature but there are games that are going to be okay annualized call of duty is going to be fine now that they've got this rhythm but when it's the same development team having to do a nine-month turnaround on a game after they've you know released the patches that they need to release after uh for post-release support uh they would benefit extremely from being able to say, like, we're going to turn our nine-month turnaround and do a 16, 17-month turnaround, you know. So that's just my thought. What are your thoughts on that, Ben? You're a sports game fan. Yeah, I think that's – I mean, in that model, I'd pay $15 for for an update. I mean, like like 2K, There's there are differences between – well, there's, there's a pretty big difference between uh, 14 and 15, in my opinion – uh, NBA 2K and I think I think that was needed but I feel like next year there's not going to be as much of a, an update with the like interface and all that good stuff and I, I feel like I could wait a year to, to get that. I like that model um, I don't know that people I don't know that any developer anywhere would buy into that model though because instead of getting you you've got people that will pay $60 for uh, a roster a roster update um, instead of yeah. waiting, and the, when developers see that as opposed to fifteen, they're not. I mean, nobody would jump on that. I but I know. think I think developers and publishers are starting to learn that like what's what speaks to the consumer the most is quality, and if we can do something that's going to up the quality of our game, because this year I'll agree, my league brand new feature in, in NBA two K fifteen, mm-hmm. awesome feature, yeah, love it. Um, but what if you can turn around and you have all of like. My league only appeals to a certain section of people. What if you can begin to market like, hey, my league completely changed. Um, is it my team? Is that the uh, yeah. like ultimate team? Yeah. You know, they come in and they say, my team completely revamped. Uh, graphics, you know, completely redone. We're like, adding the, online association We're again. adding online association. <laughs> um, you know, so like – that two-year cycle would just be able to give them a bit even bigger marketing mm-hmm. push because hype trains for games like Watch Dogs, like Halo Five, those things they get, they gain steam as the years go by. And uh, so, what do you guys think is like the sweet spot uh, for for time between iterations of the game? Three years. I think if Halo's in any, any indicator, three years is yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, two to three. I mean. Certain huge projects like Halo, you know, if if we have a bad Halo release, it's going to disappoint a lot of people. I think three years is that time to like you get completely into uh, you get completely into the game you're playing, and you ha- you feel like you can draw every ounce of juice that you can get out of it in three years. And then- I think I think in a three year I think in a three year cycle, um, what you do is 
that first year is, is the opportunity to fully digest everything that's there. And I think this is for games that are really like have a campaign element and have a, a deep online element. Um, the first year is really to fully digest it, especially games that are MLG games like Halo, where you can get in there, learn the maps, learn the strategies, learn, you know, all that sort of stuff. First year, the year that you digest it, you and you let everybody just kind of start speculating about the, the next iteration of it. The next year at E3, you do some like little hype trailer that says that there's, um, that, that, that it's in development and that it's coming and it starts going. And then the year of of the actual releases where you get to show off your game at E3. And like, I just think that three year rhythm works well. And so I'm excited for call of duty uh, going on to a three year cycle. And as far as DLC goes, I think that when games are on that longer release cycle, the DLC is worth buying usually. And it's because it serves a purpose of filling in a gap instead of just being, yeah, we can cram uh, maybe 20, 25 more dollars out of consumer in this year. This might just sucks. Yeah, I think you're. Uh, yeah, it's okay. It Hold on. Uh, now nah, you. Uh, I'm gonna check your mic. Uh, live television, guys. Live television. Live television. Oh no, you're good. You're good. Okay. What about while I'm talking? Yeah, you're good. Uh, it, it it was just while you were. I tuned in at the right time. It was a 30 second delay. All right, keep going. What were you saying? Uh, DLC improved. It's better when uh, when you're on that longer release cycle, instead of like. And I think that's why DLC. We've seen DLC. DLC decrease in quality in recent years because it stopped being something to help people stay tied into a game over a longer time and it became how can I get a few extra bucks out of somebody it became year? let me make a lesser game right. and just we'll get a full game out to you if you drop another 60 bucks right. yeah. um, Madly1986 asks an awesome question thank you for that and if you have any questions you want us to uh, talk about just drop them on the stream and, and we'll get to them when we can he says do you think there's a creative problem with annual titles do you think that even with different devs at different studios working on a series can they really innovate uh well i don't know i mean I, I if you look at like the difference between ghost and advanced warfare like that they innovated definitely i mean that was a, that was a big innovation that they had but it it was almost a different like a diff, different game entirely like innovations that kind of a different like not even a step that they took it was just a different thing and that's a, in big part because it was different developers i mean it wasn't the same people developing that game so i think i think innovation's possible with different devs but i don't know if it's i don't know if it's always achieved it's normally just a different completely different experience it definitely opens up a lot of problems i think you know splitting things between different studios but i think it also creates a lot of potential yeah, the more well, people you have working on different projects you know you're going to get a lot of different things some are going to be great some are going to be you know, a little bit left about creativity. Uh, I haven't played, I haven't played the series enough to know. So, well, one, I have to ask a question out of my own ignorance. Are there I multiple can't. developers contributing to, uh, to the Assassin's Creed series, or is that just one, one group? I believe it's just the one, isn't it? Okay, uh, yeah, ask that again. It, is you... there just one developer contributing to Assassin's Creed, or are they on a rotation? No, I. have and they have two, how, they how have two branches. Been? I think they do have two branches. Like uh, yeah. one in Montreal, I want to say, and yeah. One yeah, yeah. They have they have two. I'm not. I think there's like an east and west branch. It, one's Montreal. One's uh, somewhere else. Somewhere else. Yeah. But I, they're. I mean, they're. Do you feel that they've done well on the creative front in recent years? Well, they've had highs and lows. They've had innovation. Their games been out of plate. Been out of plate. Like excellent they may have had like bugs and glitches and stuff but they've been innovative i mean they've had uh i mean like the like here in unity they had the co-op that they've added which is hugely innovative i think and um they're they're good about i, I think what 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 they're good about when they in innovating their games they like to do a test market within their um they, they like to do a test market within their uh, players where previous games like in Black Flag they try or in um, was it Assassin's Creed Three they tried out the uh, they tried out the ship and the boats and stuff was it Assassin's Creed Three that you that yeah, you the first the ship? time in Assassin's Creed Three and then they made a huge part of Black Flag just to kind of get that you know see how it was going so they they do a lot of things like that where where they kind of test the waters first and then throw out 
you know. Okay. Cool. What I'm thinking is, and this is just completely unfounded, my thoughts. Uh, <laughs> I don't think a single developer could pull off an annual release and still remain very innovative. It, I feel like they would just be throwing a game together. But the drawback to having multiple developers on a cycle is uh, it's got to be harder to... to to keep the whole brand unified and moving in the same direction. I understand that. I think Assassin's Creed could do a little better on that three-year cycle or something if they did have three different studios or whatever working on those games. Call of Duty, I think, is going to do really well again. Um, you know, Halo, of course, does great just about every time. Some people would argue otherwise, but generally I'd say a good rule is the more time you spend, the better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know there's there's got to be a sweet spot um within it like it too long and and people lose interest in the series but uh yeah great discussion guys sorry i've been i've been really panicky about the sound quality now and uh it looks like someone in the lobby is begging for the band hammer yeah yeah uh ben take care of that go ahead and drop that band hammer (laughs) drop the band hammer who are you banning huh just read through the comments you'll see okay we don't want to acknowledge him (laughs) um let's see we also okay here's the next thing on the list netflix is developing a live action show based on the legend of zelda i i'm excited about that that's a really good piece of news to get on a monday (laughs) <laughs> um, Netflix does a fantastic job first of all with original series across all spectrums of, of genre really because isn't that what's the uh, animated series that you, you watch isn't that Bojack Horseman yeah Bojack Bo Horseman Jack- isn't that Netflix original yes and it's beautiful and you have House of Cards a lot of people like Hemlock Grove even though I didn't really they enjoy they have an it. anime too don't they I don't know but don't like they, they have shown that they they are going to get like the best of the the cream of the crop to be able to do these shows. So Legend of Zelda. Who do you want to play Link? Who do you think would make a good Link? Kevin Spacey. Who's the guy? <laughs> who's Kevin Bacon? No, who's the guy that uh, who's the guy that plays uh, Arrow? That guy. Oh, uh, what is his Steve name? Stephen Amell. Amell. Yeah. Yeah. Be good. He'd be cool, but Daniel I feel like Craig. he's probably too busy for it. Daniel Craig, he's a bit old, I think. <laughs> <laughs> who oh, has a good uh, blonde? Who, who looks good as blonde? As blonde? I mean, I mean, you could, you could just make them blonde. Yeah, Stephen Amell has a brother whose show got canceled last year. The Tomorrow People. Maybe oh, he they could got do canceled? it. Canceled? Yeah, I was oh. real sad about it. It's a great show. I just, it's a live, it's live action Zelda. Yeah. Yeah. What? Pessimism three podcast, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I love Zelda. I am a huge Zelda fan. I'm a huge Zelda fan. Huge Zelda fan. But I don't know how well it's going to translate to live action. I think it's going to be fine. Zelda Zelda has been successful across a a plethora of like genres as well. Like it adapts well. They had an animated series back in the day. I just hope they do a good job yeah. with it. Well, excuse me, princess. That was like the thing he said all the time. But, oh, uh, this is only this is a sub point to the point that we've been talking about here. But um, I got a chance to play Hyrule Warriors yeah, uh, yeah. for the very first time last week. I streamed a little bit of it. I wasn't sure I would like it because I've never really played like a is it Dynasty Warriors yeah. game. Um, but the hack and slash is really really fun, and the fact that you can kill you know hundreds of people within a matter of seconds. Is a ton of fun and like the boss characters. It's it's really interesting to try to figure out what you need to do to uh, to to beat them. I I enjoyed it. I will be streaming more of it. So uh, there you go, Larry. You've been bugging me about it for months. I finally did it. Uh, I want to play. That's what I was bugging you about. Oh, I'm sorry. I would like to play the game with you. We can get you to play. All right. Um, here we go. Next item on the list: Columbus Nova has acquired Sony Online Entertainment, the people who develop. DC Universe Online, Planet Side 2, H1Z1, and they have rebranded themselves as Daybreak Game Company and are going to begin developing multi-platform games, which means that we will possibly be seeing games like DC Universe Online and Planet Side 2 coming to Xbox One in the near future. As a guy who uh, benefits greatly from this since you do not own a PlayStation to buy exclusives, how do you feel about it, Larry? Great! Is that all? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Tonight. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Especially, what was the last game on that list? I'm My mind is... 
H one Z one. H one Z one. Yeah, that's the one that I would have been most disappointed to not be able to play. So I'm really hoping that that one comes through to Xbox. That would be good. It's funny because when because H one Z one hasn't released on PlayStation yet, and when they were kind of talking about H one Z one, they they re, I wonder how long this has been in the works because with the original conver, initial conversation about H one Z one, they were very hesitant to say that it was going to be PlayStation exclusive. Uh, as far as console gaming goes. And so it makes me wonder, like, was this deal in the works for a while and they just kind of knew that the writing was on the wall? It's it's a great sale for, for all of it because, honestly, um, these these games as standalone console exclusives, um, they have good user bases, but they, they haven't been, like, wildly successful by, by any means. And so to get these in the hands of other people who will be excited about these universes... Planet Side, Planet Side Two is going to be successful when it hits PlayStation. Like, there's no doubt in my mind about it. But like, DC Universe Online, there are people who enjoy that universe on Xbox One and want to get into it. So, this is, it's great to be a gamer uh, and have exclusivity be lifted. Yeah, and we have this conversation all the time. And like, I don't want to. I don't want to just say that is what's wrong. We just got a couple comments about Buzz. Oh no, we're good. Okay. Uh, but it's great to be a gamer when it uh, comes to things losing their, their exclusivity. But I, I want to say this, and this is just kind of a tangent, that sometimes exclusivity is required for a game to come to market. And I think we've had that conversation within like our own personal conversations, but we haven't had that on the podcast. But like, there, there's a very good chance that, what is it, uh, that, that Rise of Tomb Raider doesn't come to to market without Microsoft coming in and dumping and front loading their money and saying we'll front the cash for you to get this game to market and then you know down the line it's probably going to come to PS4 but like exclusivity helps developers who are struggling to get to to get the funds uh, to to release a game so we can't just always be um, moaning and griping about exclusivity uh, because sometimes it's just required for games to happen. Anyway, that was just a tangent. But uh, Sony Online Entertainment being Daybreak Games, those games are coming to market uh, for Xbox One probably. MLB 15, the show, uh, announced its 10th anniversary. This is releasing in March. Uh, a 10th anniversary edition, and this is super underwhelming. You'd think it 10 years for a successful franchise as MLB would be, it'd be awesome. Uh, so it's loading. Here's what it's going to come with. It's going to come with a steel case. Uh, steel book it is going to give you i think like 12,000 stubs 15 in-game bonus items dynamic themes for both the game itself and for all 30 teams and so that is your anniversary edition of this game your i'm sorry on? i'm sorry what you, i really enjoy steel books <laughs> I'm, re I'm reading the, the comments of the chat i just want to i just want to point this out real quick speculation three podcast is what we are and apparently all of these uh these people think that we are alluding to half-life 3 being confirmed <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man we are here to announce ladies and gentlemen <laughs> When we have we 15 gonna, viewers on the podcast, we are going to we officially the announce. And the digital portal opens up. We're going to officially, unofficially announce the, the confirmation of Half Life Three. Valve is just all all of the games that are lacking a third part. It's all going to be one game. Half Life Three, Portal Three, and Left 4 Dead Three are all going to be this perfect trifecta of a horrible, massive game. It's gonna it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, a what's the it, orange box thing that they put Half Life Three and Portal Two or Half Life Two and Portal Two in? Yeah, yeah. What is that? They're gonna make that with all three of them. But it's just one game. It's just one game. Everybody in the same universe is gonna be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Zombies flying through portals, that'd be crazy. You have to co-op with, with two other people. One plays Portal, one plays Left 4 Dead, the other. <laughs> it's going to be great. Where, right. How do we get here? Ben. I, I'm sorry. I, I just thought viewers, it was great. come on, I viewers. thought it was really interesting. It was good. Um, it was a good point they made. Okay. Let me read the comments for those of you listening on the podcast. Player 3, 3 working mics, Half-Life 3 confirmed. And then <laughs> Aim to Win says, Player 3, 3 green cups, Three windows. Half Life Three is confirmed. <laughs> God, it's getting deep. And then one has never played Half Life. Player three, three fingers. 
Dota 3, Half-Life 3. <laughs> if, if Larry cut his face... We had Larry cut the roof of his mouth open on like episode 11. If you cut three fingers off live on Twitch, we would... <laughs> We'll write. We'll make Half Life Three. We will. We will make Half Life Three. We'll, we'll develop it. Podcast. <laughs> we will with the earnings that we get from producing Half Life Three. So it'll be a while. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. MLB the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am. This is not an anniversary uh, bundle. Did you hear what was in it? No, I'm it's sorry. Steel book. Fifteen, uh, twelve thousand stubs, which is the in-game currency. Fifteen bonus items, dynamic themes for both the games and all thirty teams. That's what you get. Is it more? Does it cost more? Uh, I think it's probably. It'll probably be ten bucks more. That's oh. like going to your wife on your tenth wedding anniversary with a dishwasher. I, that'd be good. I mean, it's nice, but you're not gonna have. Do you really want a dishwasher? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's maybe something you can use. I, like, I see your point, Larry. Let's not get lost in metaphor. Yes. I like it. Yes. Okay. I like um, it. I hate when uh, this is. It is fine for like a pre-order bonus if you want to say, "Hey, we're going to give you some digital content." It's even cooler when for a pre-order you get some sort of physical content. But if you're going to do an anniversary edition and you're trying to make like a, this is a collector's item and you're trying to, because there are people who have owned every single one of these MLB the shows for the last ten years, mm -hmm. and if you're wanting to reward those people. You're gonna have to come up with something better than twelve thousand stubs in a steel case. You know, I like steel cases a lot. You know what would be awesome? A figurine from the team of your choice, or like a discounted lids to get a hat of the team of your choice. I'd or, take a lids discount. I would like that. Uh, the pre-order bonus for GameStop for this, and it was the thing that would tempt me to uh, to uh, pre-order this game, is you get a like. $15 coupon to I can't remember what site it is but uh, skin it.com I think and you can get a uh, an MLB skin for your controller and it covers your controller and the team of your choice so you could get a Yankees one you could get a Nats one I can get an Indians one good you could get a um, um, Cubs uh, make uh, up a baseball team right now Cubs win uh, the the Cubs sports, win. Uh, the, Cubs win. the white, the white people. They're they're a minor the league team. The, board. the storks. <laughs> oh, the sporks. Nah. Sporks. There's a storks minor league team. I think. What about the albatrosses? Maybe I think there maybe isn't. Is there a minor league albatross team? Probably. Look that up. Okay. Uh, for those of us that are excited about MLB the Show, I'll read you out some of the. I'm excited. Some of the details. I'm excited about. It. I love this game. I yeah. pick it up every year. It should come with a baseball bet. Ooh. A Louisville Slugger uh, with Ooh, team one of your those choice. tiny ones, like yeah. yeah. Oh, that would make a collector's edition awesome. Then I could carry that around in my car to bludgeon people Beat with. Stick. Phil Spencer, make it happen. Make it happen. Um, let's see. Coming to uh, the bi the biggest uh, thing coming to this year's game is this will be the first year where you can carry your save over from last year, which I think is really cool. And I. It, the, it's a strategic sales move because they understand that there are people who will skip iterations of this game in order to continue their road to the show. But it's still a cool little feature to be able to bring your character over to another year, all that hard work. What if you didn't finish last year? Uh, I, I wondered the same thing. Like, what if you were in mid-season? But I guess if you care enough to want to carry it over, you probably played enough to finish your first year. Now, is this talking about your franchises or your road to the I show? I think it's just road to the show. Okay. Let me let me make sure. Well, I might just skip that part because I had a terrible season in road I, to the show. What if, you yeah. did, what if you unloaded it out, off of your PlayStation? What are you talking about? <laughs> I unloaded the game off my PlayStation. Oh, you, you should be fine. Well, uh, well, if you deleted all of the save information... Then you're probably not up the creek. So, um, let's see. The other big things that are coming for PS4 only: uh, real time seasonal sun and shadows, um, which is really cool. So when you're playing uh, a game in May, at the same time as a game in September, the lighting is going to look different, and it's all accurate to what it looks like at those stadiums. A uh, player skin tone realism, more variation of skin tones, and. Um, if you had an opportunity to jump on the gameplay, uh, you see how big a difference this makes. Like the gameplay stream mm -hmm. that they had, yeah. uh, it may sound minor, but like he was, uh, the guy was saying that basically there were seven skin tones that everybody got placed under, or eleven skin tones, or something like this. And now it's a much wider array, so people look more true to color. Not that we see color here on Player Three Podcast. See your true colors. 
Can you paint with all the colors of the... I don't know the melody of I that. I can't oh, sing because no. it's Larry's birthday. That's right. Happy birthday, um, Larry. Also, revamp night lighting, more accurate and photorealistic rendering systems, and the PS4 is getting 10 more minor league systems. There's a new directional hitting interface. The franchise mode has been uh, re-upped. I'm hoping to hear more information on that because that's my biggest thing. Another really cool thing is there's going to be actual MLB licensed equipment in the game, so no generic equipment anymore. You'll be able to use uh, Rawlings and all that sort of stuff. So that's Sweet. Really cool. Um, I am, I, I I love this game. It's it is the most well ran round well rounded sports franchise. It's a very fun game right now. Very fun. <laughs> Great job, San Diego Studios. Um, that's it for the news. How long are we into the show? An hour and fifteen minutes. Awesome. Great. <sighs> news okay, with moving the on. Podcast guys. Moving on. Yeah. Happy birthday, Larry. Thank you. Uh, moving on to our We've Got Reviews. Reviews for you. Tonight. Happy birthday, Larry. Um, Thank you. Really, only one thing to uh, really only one thing to talk about this week, and that is the hardline, the battlefield hardline. Does anybody know where I can get me some ice tea? <laughs> Got caught shoplifting at the Chevy dealership. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. All right, moving on. <laughs> that, that moment just happened. Uh, three of us got a chance to play the Hardline beta. I'm sure Ben will have a lot to say about it, even though he didn't play it. Um, Larry, since we just had a discussion about sportses, Sport, sports. Oh, sportses. <laughs> we just we'll sports. let you jump in and the give your first players. thoughts on the Battlefield Hardline uh, beta. It's Battlefield. I don't see a lot that's changed. I mean, I haven't had extensive time with Battlefield, but it's it's what I expect. Same solid gameplay. It's not my cup of tea, but if you like Battlefield, you'll probably like Battlefield Hardline. Um, my one complaint as far as weapon balances was that the shotgun is way overpowered. Yes. It shows you where you got hit when you die. So, like, this guy clipped your pinky finger from three miles out, and you're dead. Like, the thing is, you're done. Run shotgun. It's unstoppable. I, I imagine that if, if they are going to tweak anything, it's going to be the shotgun. Because <laughs> yeah. everybody knows that the shotgun. Yeah. I'm sniping. Way OP. down the street shoots me in the face with it. Man. Uh, I'll tell you yeah. what, those assault rifles yeah. are just ridiculous. I thought that this battlefield, or at least this beta, and I can't see too many things changing from the beta to the release in three or four weeks, whatever it is. But um, I thought it was just, it felt really clunky going in. The, I just, Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3 seemed like they were very smooth. I was trying to ride my dirt bike down the road in the desert of the meth lab in Arkansas or somewhere, and uh, I liked how they added where you can kind of go, uh, you know, rogue Clint Eastwood cop and stand up on your motorcycle and shoot your assault rifle, but it felt just really not organic at all. Um, I thought the graphics... Yeah, it looked terrible. I thought the visceral graphics looked awful. Maybe they can change visceral. that. Maybe this is an early build or something like that. I hope so, because it looks nothing like what DICE did with um, the last few uh, iterations. <sighs> I think, and I don't know if this is a mark of Battlefield or if it's just the beta, I don't know. But as far as the beta goes, it kind of did a terrible job, too, of explaining how the game types worked. Like, you oh, just yeah. dropped in and... Well, that's just Battlefield. That's just... Okay. They, they do a poor job. Yeah, you just got to You, gotta you get a little it. paragraph underneath each game mode. And, and, like, uh, I didn't understand how some of the special stuff worked. Like, one guy, like, if you're the medic, you can drop this med pack thing on the ground. Do people just touch it and they're healed? Yeah, basically. Okay, like, those kind of things. Like, That's I, how Battlefield I works. I gotta know how things work. I'm like, alright, I'm running medic. I need to help people, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> they very much try to survive on familiarity. Like, that, you, when you play, this isn't the first time you've played Battlefield. Uh, Battlefield 4 was really my first in-depth experience with it. Isn't, but, this, uh, isn't this supposed to be Cops and Robbers, though? Yes. You got medics? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the roles are still the same. And if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. This was the laziest way to do this. Like, if you want to do a Cops and Robbers game, cool. But throwing the Battlefield tag on it and just kind of piggybacking off the success of that franchise when this is, the concept deviates so far from what Battlefield has been is just really lazy. Like, you're EA publishing this game, and you've got more money than God, and just... <laughs> Just, just use your marketing resources to launch a new IP. Like, come up with a, uh, something else. Yeah, and you were right on that. Like, it, it, it doesn't make sense. The, the multiplayer doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's like okay, you, we're robbing a bank. We got, we got all these people that are robbing a bank. As long as our police department can stop it without losing a, more than a hundred guys, then we're, we consider this a success. <laughs> um, 
I just uh, it, it, it angers me. The whole the whole entire premise of it angers me because the the multiplayer just seems like the concept isn't really well thought out. The fact that they tacked on Battlefield to the name it, it, and they don't have LMGs and that makes me mad too. It uh. As far as the gameplay goes, it's what I expect from Battlefield. I mean, it, it was solid, but it was wrapped in a package that just didn't make sense and wasn't done very well. It was it was Battlefield 4 with the cops and robbers skin. It was DLC. It's $60 DLC. Uh, the heist mode is kind of cool. Like, the premise of it is, is kind of cool, where you got to cut open the vault and go in and rob the vault and all that. But I think uh, Seth and I agree, like, we don't think the gameplay was nearly as solid as what Battlefield 4 is now. It wasn't as fluid. It, it was just, it was really just. It was clunky. I, I think felt the, like I'm just boom, 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 boom. Like the Hulk running through the desert. Molten Samurai 25 says it here. Hardline is Payday 3. <laughs> it's Payday 3 with a big budget. Didn't uh, Greg and Colin say that on Beyond until last week? Did they? I think so. See, there we go. Beyond. But, Beyond. Beyond. Uh, rest in peace, them. Because, <laughs> Tonight. 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 Today because this week episode. is their last episode at, at Beyond. What? Yeah, they quit IGN. They have their own thing now. I thought they were still going to be called Beyond. Though. Marty no, Sleeve no, no. is Marty Sleeve is taking, taking over. over as Beyond. So, anyway, but they're Beyond. still. Uh, what is it? Well, let's just funny gamer or something. Kind of funny games. Kind of funny games. Just, now. Well, um, Beyond. I feel like the. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like the. The hit detection was kind of off too, and that oh, yeah. I, mean, I had a terrible time with that. And uh, maybe it's just because I suck at it, uh, but yeah. And the fact there's no LMGs, which is my favorite weapon to play with. Let's see, is oh. this comment? You you talk talk. We haven't mentioned this, but the auto uh, the auto record clip feature was the most annoying. Oh I've gosh, ever seen yes. It. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I noticed yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, it was terrible. I did absolutely nothing at one point. I know. Except Man. for staying in the capture zone. Awful. And it's sharing this with all my friends. It, it gave you, what, 15 clips in I had less than an hour? I had 15 clips in 90 minutes. One of my save clips was a dude came running over the wall and shot me and Luke both in the face. <laughs> and my Xbox is like, cool, you really screwed up there. Here's a memorial to EA it. is horrible about that. With Madden 25, or it may have even been Madden 15, if you got scored on by the computer, it was like, highlight saved. And, uh, well, thanks. I appreciate you. Because <laughs> I really wanted to go back and watch them score a 95-yard touchdown on me. Yeah. Mate, please. Phil Spencer, please allow us to turn off auto uh, auto record. Phil Spencer, make it so. Make it so. And there's one more thing I had to say about Battlefield. But I can't remember what it was. Can you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I'll say it's uh, Battlefield try again, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Battlefield. Uh, there weren't any like glaring, horrendous mistakes. You didn't fall through the map or anything. So, hopefully, congratulations, Battlefield. Hopefully, that bodes well. Maybe they'll have a launch that's worth uh, buying. But I would still encourage players to hold off on purchasing it because of Battlefield's history of releasing broken games. What game do we want uh, to have the Battlefield model, destructible environments? We were talking about that. We were talking about Titanfall wanting, yeah, wanting destructible Titanfall and uh, uh, Battlefront. Man, I um, I just lost what I was going to say. You were talking about oh, I love the new beta model though that like. Like, we all have very good access to betas. Because um, it's allowed me to play Evolve and realize, like, not my cup of tea. It's allowed me to play Battlefield Hardline and say, you know, just get completely irate about it. I'm very upset about Battlefield. I don't know why. Why am I, why am I burning my life away being upset about this? I'm just not going to buy it. Uh, we all, uh, there's a couple people in the chat who said they canceled their pre-order because of the beta. It allows you to get your hands on it and, and, and figure out if it's your thing. And so... And it allows uh, developers to see if their game's going to work online. Love it. So, anything else about Battlefield uh, Hardline you guys want to mention? No. Nope. Tonight. All right. So, moving on to our random question of the week. Random question of the week for the month, for the week. Happy birthday, Larry. It's beautiful. I love you. Thanks. Um, uh, this was actually a question that was asked by, let me scroll up and see if I can find it again. I got it. I'll, I'll put it in the thing. That's a long name. Here, I got it. Right here, I I, uh, I just copied it. Was it? Uh, Do you normally lick that mic? Was it the de <laughs> the delinquent? Was huh? it the delinquent? Okay, well, uh, I don't know what was the question. Uh, what are you? What are your thoughts on this nah. block content? No, nah. uh, wasn't that. Oh, we can talk about that. That's cool. We'll take some viewer questions here, but uh, that's not the question I was going to go. Read that question out. Okay, the de the delinquent. It's uh, 
kind of a clever name. Um, ask, what are your thoughts on disc lock content versus actual downloadable content? Do you think it's fair or unfair? Definitely unfair. I've ranted on that extensively. Uh, if you've already made the content before the game releases, you're just trying to squeeze more cash out of me, and it makes me mad, and I probably won't buy it. Yeah, I think it's uh, it, it's definitely a very poor way. Uh, to model your company, to put something on a disc. Uh, I love what you said. I think it was you, Ben, who was like, with the the dark below, you're like, just just make me sit through a a 15 minute cutscene of a loading screen that right. says that it's downloading it, just to make me feel a little better that I didn't pay for this once and now I'm having to pay for it again. Yeah, terrible. That that wasn't the question. I can't seem to find the question that I'm looking for, but it, it was a great question. And if you ask this question and you're still in the stream, tell us it was you. and We'll give you a shout out. Uh, but the question was, uh, go around the table and uh, talk about who your favorite developer is. The, your, your favorite studio. Okay. Well, all right. We'll, we won't go around the table. We'll start with Seth. Go. Hey, um, Naughty Dog. Hands down. I say Gosh. it. I say it every week. Almost, I love the PlayStation exclusives more than anything else, and Naughty Dog just takes the cake on those. They brought us Uncharted, they brought us The Last of Us, those are the obvious answers. They brought us Crash Bandicoot, and all the other guys that look kind of like dogs. Jack and Daxter. That kind of look like Naughty Dogs. Ooh. 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 Um, that's, that's mine. Just great stories, great characters, great games. Alright, man. Anyone else? Ben? Oh, no, Larry? Birthday uh, boy? Crap, I forgot. What's your favorite studio? That's the question. Oh, yeah. Um, Valve. They don't put out uh, stuff very often, but when they do put it out, it's well done, and they usually think outside the box. It's not the same game that everybody else is releasing. All right. 4v1 multiplayer. Um, They've done it. Yeah. This is mine's, mine's a toss-up. Uh, <laughs> Here are my <laughs> top five favorite studios. Nah, I, I'm, I am a huge, I'm a huge Naughty Dog fan because I I love Jack and Daxter. It was one of the very first games I just got started out playing, and, and it was awesome. I love uh, Last of Us and the Uncharted series that I'm starting to play in PlayStation now is really fun. But um, just to be different. I'm gonna pick another. Bethesda is really. I uh, knew he was gonna go Bethesda. Yeah. I knew it. Yeah, they and are. If you weren't, uh, I was gonna bring it up so that you'd add a third. <laughs> yeah, Bethesda <laughs> is. Uh, Skyrim was a game that I gave a lot of time to, a lot of time, and I don't know. Um, I don't know in relation to my entire gaming uh, time that I've spent gaming in life. And then what I spent playing Skyrim, I feel like it's probably a quarter of my gaming life was spent playing <laughs> playing Skyrim. So Bethesda's got a nice and warm place in my heart. Bethesda, please release a re, uh, remastered version of Skyrim for uh, current gen. Thank you. You're welcome. Have you played any of the Fallout stuff? Yes, I love Fallout as well. Fallout 3 was amazing. Um, please release a Fallout 3 for uh, next-gen consoles. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I love Naughty Dog. Love The Last of Us, love the Uncharted series, love Crash Bandicoot. Um, but just for the sake of having an answer that's different from everyone else's answer, because I think we could all pretty confidently say Naughty Dog for us PS, yeah, PlayStation owners. Good. Uh, I'm gonna have to go. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Bungie. I I, I enjoy Bungie. I I love Halo. I wa it, you said you wasted so much of your life on Skyrim. I wasted almost all of my life on Halo Three mm -hmm. uh, multiplayer, and they just even with Destiny, like Destiny has its issues, and um. Uh, you know, I, I, we've called them out a lot on this podcast, but I play I play video games to play multiplayer, and Bungie does multiplayer first person shooters the best, like hands down. Uh, Halo Three was great, Destiny was fantastic. Like you can't hold a candle to. And they're constantly Bungie. working on it. You can tell they keep the community really involved yeah. in that process. Oh yeah. And were I not still butt hurt over game over Destiny and. Uh, the Master Chief Collection, it would have been really hard. Like, I probably would have picked 343 or Bungie. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, 343, I don't know. Halo 4 didn't grip me near as, uh, like, multiplayer-wise as much as yeah. Halo 3 did. And, and as, as much as Destiny has its issues and as much as Bungie is to blame, I think Activision also played a really big part in the model and the things that they – the decisions that they made marketing-wise. Uh, if not – by pure direction, but just by advice of, hey, 
you know, a lot of people are excited about your game. Why don't you do it this way? And then Bungie saying, you know what, you're right, let's do that. And then not really thinking it through how it affected us as gamers. But uh, if we're just talking based on the merit of what I find most uh, compelling about games, and that being multiplayer, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Bungie. Well, how about you guys? What's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite um, developers out there? We'll shout them out on the podcast. Uh, but uh, wild speculation. I don't think we have anything for wild speculation. And uh, leave us a review at iTunes, and we'll read them out during the show. Also, were there any questions uh, that came in through there um, that uh, you wanted to to ask? Let's see. Through there. Let's see. Live television, boys and girls. Uh, I guess. I guess if you're listening, still, just send us some questions. We'll a- we'll answer some uh, viewer questions. Uh, Madlink1986 says it's a shame because Visceral are one of my favorite game developers going back to Battlefield Hardline. He said, but Hardline looks a bit like rubbish. Uh, campaign is maybe where uh, they put their focus. And battle, Battlefield <laughs> uh, campaigns are, are good. Uh, though The Battlefield 4 campaign was broken for a long, long time. But who knows? Maybe, but I don't see Battlefield really pouring their resources into campaign over multiplayer just because the multiplayer is what keeps people coming back for that. We could do. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm excited to see where Respawn's going to go with Titanfall being their first game. Uh, I know a lot of people got bored with Titanfall, but I, I think no one can deny that that was a pretty awesome first game for somebody to drop. And uh, Techland, uh, th- did they do Dying Light? Dying Light, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm. They did the Dead Island stuff. They've done Dying Light. I'm kind of. They're good. I like watching. I, I, I'm going to keep on where that's going to. Okay, here's a couple questions. Uh, Lethal Wreck asks, do you think that Battlefield will ever make the pro stage? And also, same question to go with Madden 15. I, th- I think, um, I-, I don't know about Battlefield. I don't think it has the pacing. Like, it's a, it's a for a shooter, it's kind of a slow-paced game. Yeah, it's it's really big. Like, the, the, the most successful game types are taking place on really big, really big maps. And... Uh, it, you know, Call of Duty had a time kind of trying to break into the pro scene, and, and Call of Duty is a much more uh, – I'm not going to say that because I don't know if I agree. I was going to say it's a much more loved franchise. but Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell there. But it, uh, the the gaming and the pacing itself is much more compact in Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, I spend half my time in Battlefield playing Conquest just running from the spawn point to the action. And then usually it's like I'm in The Shining. I'm that uh, the caretaker in The Shining. You know, you run. I'm not. I can't spoil The Shining. Never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> Moving on. So Battlefield, I don't. I don't think so. Madden 15, I don't think so either. Madden 15 has a um, a tournament stage that is pretty popular. But as far as like MLG sports games or niche games, even though they have big followings, like, but you got to be a sports fan and a video game fan to really get into them. And Madden 15, it, like the Madden series, it's really easy to cheese. Super easy to cheese. Real easy. So, uh, I don't think so. Uh, Manny Fresh asks, how do you feel about the upcoming Final Fantasy in Kingdom Hearts 3? Uh, not a big Final Fantasy fan, and I've never really played Kingdom Hearts, so uh, I'm going to leave this to you guys. I've played Kingdom Hearts a little bit, and I loved it, but I've never been a PlayStation owner, so it's not something I've been able to go all the way through. Right. If I had access to it, I'd be very excited about it, but I don't, so I'm not. <laughs> I've never played either one of those games. So, I know if this was on this podcast, he'd talk for twenty minutes about Kingdom Hearts. His wife loves Kingdom Hearts. He likes Kingdom, yeah. Kingdom Hearts. So, um, all right, I think that's it, guys. Okay, okay. good podcast, great podcast. All right, let's go around the circle. Give our uh, whatever we want to give. Okay, uh, I am Ben. Uh, you can find me at Xbox Live at Hugh Bomb Trady. That's uh. W H O. I got you. I'm typing them. Oh, okay. Oh, but oh, for the podcast, I guess. Okay. W H O B O M T R A D Y. Um, that's all one word on uh, on PSN. Xbox Live. It's three words. Uh, who bomb tradey. Uh, same spelling. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's. What are you Twitch be streaming is, this week? Uh, what am I? I'll be streaming some Dying Light this week. Um, I'll be streaming uh, maybe some 2K this week, uh, and I'd like to. I'd love to be streaming some Evolve this week, but my friends don't want to play. We with don't me. like you, Ben. So, I'm just kidding. I we love you, but that. we just don't like Evolve. I didn't like Evolve. Not yeah, much. that's it. Yeah, that's all I care to give you right now. If you uh, follow me on those services, I may give you more information about me. But yeah, <laughs> right on. <laughs> right, go ahead. Um, I'm Seth. 
Um, you can find me on the PlayStation Network at Buttzors. So that's B U T T Z O R Z. Buttzors. The uh, doctor. You can find me on the Xbox Live at Dongzors. D O N G Z O R Z. I've got the lower half, the lower body uh, <laughs> double going on. Oh my God. And uh, if you if you want to find me on uh, Twitch on the rare occasion that I stream, you can find me at Buttzors again. That's B U T T Z O R Z. Um, uh, I'll go for you. Oh, that's right. It's awkward. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. awkward. Awkward. It's awkward now. Go, Larry. Go do it. Go. It's awkward. Awkward. Uh, I'm on Twitter and Twitch at Lair Hunts Zombies. L A R H U N T S Z O M B I E S. That's all I'm giving you. All right. Uh, oh, you... wait, wait. I'll be streaming Halo 2 with Lucas here. Ooh, Tonight. Here we go at twitch.tv slash. Lair hunt zombies. Okay, and then um, uh, I'll type out all this at the end for the people in the stream. Um, and then uh, my name is Luke Croft. You can find me on Twitter at TK from Antioch. Uh, you can find me on PSN at Lodger Blackman. You can find me on Xbox Live at Download a Hoagie. I stream right here on Twitch.tv slash Player 3 Podcast. And I will be playing uh halo tonight i will be playing dark souls uh as as well and larry's very good at halo that may be yes. it <laughs> that's the funniest comment i've ever so, seen what is it <laughs> but you ain't even good at halo <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> probably so um that's it uh you can find us on uh twitter at player three podcast you can go to our website player three podcast.com we've got a far cry 4 review up we've got um uh where there's a new article about why Diz hasn't come into the next generation uh, yet and uh, we'll be posting more content up there as we go thank you guys for listening thank you guys for tuning in we're going to stop the podcast right now and this has been you can you can do it oh, go ahead go ahead do it here we go really just do it play a three podcast he hammed that up for you <laughs> that was that was all of them loaded up into one People happy can. birthday larry <laughs>